Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally Barrett and today I'm going to be sharing a little bit more in depth on my journey and how I got interested in health and fitness. I won't go in all the details. I will gladly share that at another time to get me um, emotionally, physically prepared. I made myself some coffee and stroop waffles. Oh no. This is why I don't eat in my bed. I was always pretty active in high school. I was on dance team, I did tennis. And then when I went into college, uh, there were maybe times like freshman year where I didn't want to gain the freshman 15. But other than that, I really didn't care too much about fitness. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. After college, I moved to Slovenia, and my first year in Slovenia, again, was not concerned about my health and fitness. Occasionally, I would do like a home workout or go on a very short run. I didn't realize how much weight I had gained at that point, um, especially for always being very small and petite. I had gained a lot of weight for me at that time. My second year in Slovenia was when I started going back to the gym and just in terms of getting additional strength and being active, that kind of entered my life then. I noticed my body changed very quickly because I went from not being active at all for the past couple years to being a lot more intentional and my body started to transform. It was great. I was loving it. And then I moved back to the States for a year and during that time had a lot of family members and close family friends who passed away from diabetes, heart issues, um, cancer, that really impacted me. And that was a year of just a lot of anxiety and questioning my body and health. But that really got me thinking more about the choices I was making, especially in terms of my diet. My father has type two diabetes. My uncle at that time passed away from type 2 diabetes and my dad's father had type 2 diabetes. And I just remember when my uncle passed away thinking I never want to die of a disease that I could have done something to change. So that kind of started my journey from just being focused on fitness to then even health in terms of food. And it was going really well. I saw a lot of improvements in my digestion. And then <laughs> something happened. I feel so like embarrassed to share. Here is where things get a little more vulnerable. I don't know how long ago this was. Now, four years ago, I think. I was in a relationship that I was very excited about. And then we broke up. And it gets me because um, how I responded to it and the lies I believed about myself and my reaction and the impact it had on me um, and what I emotionally went through is what makes me sad when I think about it now. I was just confused and I was sad. It took a toll on me, not just emotionally, but mentally and physically. And so in my mind, I just remember thinking, wow, maybe if I was more beautiful, then maybe he would want to continue dating me. And I knew, I knew in my head that it had nothing to do with my appearance. But in my heart, I just didn't want it to end and I was sad and so therefore I needed something that I thought perhaps I can control. And so therefore, I went to my physical body. Something that I was already working towards to really become stronger and healthy then became 
something I was so focused on and obsessive about because I thought this is what needs to change in order for me to be worth something, in order for me to be lovable, in order for me to receive the confidence and self-worth I'm looking for, then I need to change something, I need to take control, and this is how I can do it. And it really took a toll on me. I began to obsessively count my calories. I would put in all of the minutes I spent on a walk, all those minutes I spent working out, doing weight training. And if I knew I was going to go to someone's house and I wanted to be able to enjoy my time there and eat a cookie, I, instead of having just the freedom to eat a cookie, I would make sure, okay, I should first make sure I know how many calories a cookie is gonna be, and I need to run that additional amount of calories off so I feel more freedom to eat it. Mm-hmm. You want a cookie? Eat a cookie. I was already trying to make some physical changes in terms of the food I ate and seeing how it changed my body, but at that time, I was experiencing so much stress, anxiety, and sadness from the breakup that I couldn't, I could not determine what was causing what in my body. And so then I became so anxious and so stressed out that I started getting really bad hormonal acne. Instead of focusing on the stress and what was going on internally, I'm like, okay, I need to cut out this, this, and this and cutting out all of those foods at once, I think just caused even more stress and shock to my body. And I just became obsessed with what foods I should or shouldn't eat, how much I should work out, what types of workouts I should do, um, the amount of calories I'm having, and am I working out enough to make sure I work off more calories. It was, becoming obsessive, I couldn't think about anything other than my body. And I knew that there was something deeper going on inside. I knew I hated, I don't say this very often because I've always had a lot of self-confidence. <laughs> In fact, maybe too much self-confidence, I don't know. But I have never dealt with self-confidence issues and I just remember multiple times thinking, I hate who I am right now. And I remember thinking, if someone else said and verbalized the things that I think about myself in my own mind, I would be heartbroken for them. Although I knew that, I knew it was unhealthy, it was just so hard to push through it because it still felt like something I could control. And I still wanted that affirmation that I was lovable, that I had worth, that I was beautiful. Even though those things had never been questioned, I just wanted it so badly that I couldn't stop, or at least I chose not to. And at one point in time, it just hit me that there must be more than this, that my body was so run down from being overworked from workouts and exercises, not getting the full amount of food it was needing, and from just mentally exhausted from always having this on my mind. And I just remember thinking, there is definitely more. There is no way this is going to be what solves my self-worth issues and I'm not going to be able to find my identity in this. Sure, I might gain some confidence and I might look better physically, but in the end, if what's going on in my heart that's causing these changes, isn't in a healthy place, then it is insignificant in the end. It was really hard and it took a long time and I was sad for a while and I was encouraged sometimes about my physical body and discouraged other times, but I was so much wanting freedom from the lies I was believing. And I think that was just honestly the first step. The first step was identifying 
no matter how much I try, finding my identity in the affirmation of people seeing my physical beauty and confirming it isn't what is going to give me personal self-worth. Instead, it's going to be something so much more deeper than that, something that is consistent and stays the same even if my physical body changes over time. Something that if I break my foot, which I did twice, if I have hormonal acne everywhere, which I did, if I am just feeling tired and don't wanna work out, which I do many times, that it's okay because my worth is not in my physical features and how I look. I began to see that my self-worth was not about perfecting myself, but instead seeing that even in my weaknesses, even in my sorrows, my sadness, my imperfection, and my giftings, my passions, that I still am loved, that I'm lovable, that I am known, and that I have a purpose. That was really freeing. And part of it for me was even in my relationship with God, seeing that there is a creator who knows me and who loves me and created me and he sees me in my imperfections and he loves me anyways. That's not the end of my story and it continues to go on and on and it's still hard. I think for anyone who has ever struggled with periods of trying to gain control through their physical bodies or has counted calories or have had eating disorders or body dysmorphia, I think there's always a portion of that in your life. Um, you know what, I'm sure you can experience freedom and I've seen a lot of growth. I don't know if I've experienced complete freedom yet, but it's something I'm continuing to fight for, continuing to remind myself of truth, continuing to tell myself, yes, you are beautiful, but even the days you're not wearing makeup, the days where your acne comes out, the days where you feel bloated, you're still beautiful and you still have worth. And I have to remind myself that. So it's been really encouraging to see growth over time and it took many years and it took a lot of identifying what was going on in my life and the lies I was believing. And it was, it was hard. It, I felt alone because I didn't want to share with people. I felt embarrassed because something I had loved, health and fitness, and was so good for me, I now made it an idol and I didn't want people to know that. And I felt ashamed and embarrassed, which then made me feel isolated and alone because I wasn't willing to share it with the people who knew and care about me the most. From that, I, I really strive and want to help other women who are facing these similar issues. I want women to know how they can live and walk towards taking steps towards a healthy lifestyle without it becoming an idol and without it be something that consumes them. In order for us to heal, to walk through these issues and to find self-worth, it's going to take honesty. It's going to take being vulnerable. It's going to take people coming alongside us and both encouraging us and challenging us. And so I want to set that precedence. And so that's why I wanted to share this with you today. I feel like I am a great person to do this with because I feel like I've experienced so much of it. I've experienced times where I had horrible health. I didn't even think about it. I've experienced times where I have had great health and was in a really good mental space. But then I've had times where I've looked great and I was taking all the right steps health-wise, but I was in a horrible emotional mental state. I can honestly say when I was at my slimmest was the time I felt the worst about myself. The absolute worst and it was the time I probably physically looked the best and honestly the time I was my heaviest I probably felt the most freedom because it just didn't even occur to me but it just goes to show you that having a healthy lifestyle does not guarantee you happiness I want us to be challenged 
and to see what's going to cause a deeper joy, not even necessarily happiness. We all have difficult things we walk through. We all have challenges, but what is it that's going to give us a deeper joy and deeper sense of self-worth? That is why I shared this with you today and that's why I, why I wanted to be honest in sharing part of my story. I can't wait to share more with you and take you on this ride. Please go ahead and like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Let it go.